our solar system, uh, solar system, our solar setup, it's not a planetary system, our solar setup a little bit now that we've had I think four years under our belt. It's gone through some change, some different iterations, and this is kind of our final setup, I hope. Um, I hope we don't spend any more money or effort into uh, solar other than installing the last charge controller that we're gonna put in. Um, but this is gonna be a general overview of where we're at now and kind of why we made some of those decisions. Hope that you enjoy it. Hope that, it, uh, hope that it's valuable for you. All right, so we're adding a second inverter, so we have an inverter per leg, and it allows us to get rid of this uh, smart phase selector that was a product that was purchased before they had multipluses that would do both legs of the power. This thing has a, a weak relay in it, so I'm having to push the transfer switch button in there manually right now, so it's already on its last legs, and it's just another piece of equipment to, to kind of get in the way and limit what you got going on. This will give me 30 amps of inverter on each leg of power when I'm not hooked up to power. And I'm using these midnight solar uh, combiner boxes with a breaker in there to break out the two legs of the 50 amp power cord and um, split it and run it into each inverter and then back out of each inverter to, to give us a nice clean installation. I'll do a little bit more video here in a little bit when it's done, but this is the beginning of it. That's breaking out our 50 amp power into into uh, into a situation where we can split it and run the legs individually out of this box. All right, so we have the output box wired to the appropriate terminals in each inverter, and now. We've got to go over here and do this input box and get that ready to go. Get it all wired up. And if you wonder why I or other people like to install their equipment on a board before it goes into the space, it's that it's much easier to work out here and then just transport the board into the space and pin it to the wall that you're working on. These wires would be not fun to work on while we're on our knees in a cramped space. All right, so we've made some changes to our solar and battery bank. Um, we have added batteries from our original install. If you watched our video series, you see now that we've got four of the standard um, configuration batteries down there, and they're wired in series parallel. And we've added, you can see there, battery equalizers to them because the pairs this is a 24 volt setup. The pairs were getting out of balance when they were discharged deeply and it was causing issues with our battery capacity. And then I picked up this pair of batteries that's a little bit different form factor, same, same characteristics for amp hours and everything, but it's a different form factor. So we put it up there <coughs> um, just to have an extra set. We're still connected everything to the Lynxes. And if you look back there, Underneath that piece of heat shrink is a fuse holder that connected the last battery pair to the Lynxes in order to keep everything equal and all the wiring the same. We've got our solar charge controller and breakers over there, our 24 to 12 volt DC converters over there so we can power the coach. And we took the inverter out of this compartment because it was tending to get a little bit warm in the summer months. Um, when it was under heavy draw or heavy charging and we also needed the room to put this pair of batteries in there So the inverters out uh, I've got a fan that will go in that hole at some point It just hasn't gone in there yet and I will probably put a hole right There where that pilot hole is to put another fan in to draw air out of this compartment But really the batteries haven't been the heat problem. The inverters have been a heat problem. So we we moved the inverters and you can see here we've got the inverters moved into the interior portion of the underneath basement um, and the breakers that we wired to split out the 30 or the uh, the 50 amp um, power supply 
to each of the inverters and put one inverter on a leg each leg of the power supply are there and you'll see that we've got a battery shut off switch on each one of them and then the communications cables and everything else and I chose to put the inverters this way instead of next to each other because in our experience they will generate some pretty good heat if they are really being worked or if they are uh, da, da, da. let's see let's try that again. so this is the, where we installed the inverters and i say inverters as we added a, an extra inverter we had a smart phase selector to distribute power to everything in the coach it started giving us problems primarily because the relay to engage it was weak so i'd have to manually engage it when we switched to power sources and it would cut out a little bit too frequently and it was just not reliable and we only had uh, 3,000 volt amps of um, power available this doubles it so we can run pretty much everything in the coach we want we've got one inverter on each leg of power now there's the breakers that we used to break out the 6-4 wire and run it into each inverter and then back to the 6-4 wire to the main breaker panel so everything in the coach is now uh, <clears throat> capable of being powered by the inverter we still have to watch our power loads if you put too much load on it it will um, cause them to have issues we don't have a full 50 amp power here but we're, we're pretty close and I chose to split the inverters instead of mount them right next to each other because I have experienced in the past that under heavy charging or heavy discharging and inverting they do create quite a bit of heat and I didn't want them right next to each other so they you know compound the issue so we went ahead and split them and moved them into this under basement storage area because it does get some air conditioning just kind of um, because of how well you know RVs are built the air conditioning kind of leaks down through the air returns and it does get heat in the winter so it helps keep it climate controlled we'll see how it does and see if we need to add any cooling fans or anything else like that um, this was pretty much unused space we had that shelf over there or that rack over there and we just moved it over to the to the other wall and it stores stuff so didn't really affect our space at all and then you can see down at the bottom they're on battery disconnects as well so everything's capable capable of being uh, connected or disconnected individually in our system all of our equipment originally um, now we've moved the inverters out because we wanted more room for battery bank and you see there there's a one more charge controller that we're waiting on parts to install um, that charge controller is going in because we have 2400 watts um, capability on the currently installed charge controller but we have 3200 watts of panel on the roof so we want to be able to maximize it now odds are due to efficiency we'll probably not really maximize it every time but if we get a chance to if for some reason there's really good solar production we want to be able to harvest all 3200 watts you'll notice that we no longer have um, battleborne batteries and we'll talk about that here in a little bit but we've got eight Rodoto native 24 volt batteries these are 200 amp hour batteries so 800 amp hours at 24 volts it's a pretty big battery bank the only downside to these batteries is that they do not have low temp cutoff for charging so we had to do a couple uh we had to take some measures this year because we're in some pretty cold temperatures in order to accommodate that if you see down here we have temperature probes we've got one on each side of the battery bank i actually put this one in here and then we use reptile heaters which aren't on right now to keep this compartment warm next year i'm probably going to add uh, tank heaters underneath the battery on an aluminum uh, sheet of aluminum but this year this worked out pretty well we just put these in here they have a rare earth magnet holding them up to the to the roof of the compartment and then we put them in the front of the compartment because that's the coldest portion of it and then they are thermostatically controlled and again we put the temperature probes down on the bottom of the batteries because that's again the coldest portion of the compartment and 
made sure that we stayed above 32 degrees. But this is where we put the thermostatic control. Um, you see that the reading of the temperature, uh, I've got a, a temperature range set for these things to turn on. And then there's a hole where the cables go through. That hole will probably later have a fan in it to blow air in from this compartment because the air tends to be either warmed or air conditioned um, just to add another uh, layer of ability to keep it climate controlled in that compartment so that the batteries don't go outside their temperature specifications. As we sit here in front of our messy battery compartment, you may be wondering why we no longer have battle-borne batteries for our battery bank. Um, there's a good reason for it. And a big portion of that reason is that initially when Battleborn started selling batteries and we were looking at them back in, I think 2019, they claimed that their battery balancers would magically make sure that all the batteries in a series parallel setup to create 24 volts, that they would keep them in balance. And the reality of the matter that I've experienced and several others have experienced is that that doesn't happen. So what I mean by that is that you've got two 12 volt batteries connected together to create a 24 volt battery. What happens over time is that those batteries will drift apart. And when I say drift apart, the voltage on them will drift apart. So ideally, a charged lithium battery is at 14.4 ish. Uh, so you'll have two batteries that are 14.4 creating a 28.8 battery pair, 28.8 volts battery pair. But what happens over time, especially with heavy demand and big loads, is that you'll end up with one battery that is running somewhere around 13.25 volts and you'll end up with another battery that's running somewhere around 14 and some change which creates unbalanced battery bank and then when you have a heavy demand or deep discharge on that battery bank the lower voltage batteries will uh, drop voltage when there's a heavy load put on them and then that pair of batteries will drop out of your battery setup excuse the noise in the background um, and that tends to create, or at least in my experience, has created a cascading failure where once one drops out, multiple drop out. I spent two weeks working with Battleborn's senior technician troubleshooting batteries and found that I had five batteries bad. Ten batteries that uh, tested bad. Uh, two of them would not hold a 14 volt charge they only came up to about 13.2 or 13.6 when they were being charged and three of them i think had loose connections internally because if you move the post of the battery they would stop discharging so effectively when i was running my battleborn battery bank i had two pairs of batteries that worked all the time and then i had three pairs of batteries that worked every once in a while two of the bad batteries were in the same battery pair so Whenever I put a high load on the battery bank or a deep discharge, especially if I went multiple days without fully charging it and only got partially charged 80 or 90%, I was almost guaranteed that my batteries would start failing as they discharged overnight. Um, they would start out getting down to about 30 to 40% state of charge, and then the next day it would make it to 40 or 50% state of charge before they failed, and then the next day it was 50 or 60% state of charge, and then they'd start failing. So it really made for a miserable situation as when we were trying to boondock. So after troubleshooting, we got five warranty replacements, and then based off of other people's battery and solar experience, especially with these series parallel pairs, we went ahead and got rid of the Battleborn batteries and went with native 24 volt batteries that don't have the balancing issues of a series parallel pair. Since then, we've done two weeks, um, yeah, two weeks in a row boondocking. Never once did we have a failure. We were able to discharge the batteries pretty deeply, charge them up partially for the next day and discharge them again. No failures whatsoever. So I'm hoping this has completely resolved that issue. And if you're thinking about doing a 24 or 48 volt battery bank, um, I would recommend you go with native 24 or 48 volt batteries because it just gets rid of a lot of complexity and issues that you'll run into with balancing. I won't believe any battery manufacturer that says, hey, you know what? You can series parallel wire our batteries and they will be just fine. It doesn't work out. In fact, Battleborn in the troubleshooting recommended battery balancers for us. And 
we did put battery balancers on for the last six months or a year that we we're using them and the battery balancers work well if you don't put a heavy load on the batteries but if you put a heavy load the batteries still get out of balance and then if you don't get them fully charged up through a full absorption cycle the batteries will be out of balance and every single discharge after that they just get further and further out of balance that was our experience your experience may be different and if you've had no problems with that please let us know please let us know what you've done differently to make it work for you but uh, life has been much easier and simpler and we've got more reliable power since we went with 24 volt native batteries. Hope this was valuable to you. Hope it provided some useful information. If you have any questions, put them in the comments. Um, like, comment, subscribe, do all the social media things and check out the other videos in this series that are in the comments or in the caption um, for more information on how we went about doing our solar install and kind of how it evolved over time.